Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Darren Ganji, and I'm here for one of two post-race reports from the 2015 I Race for Life seminar that took place on March 5th through the 7th of this year. And this show is going to cover the road racing portion, and then I'm going to have a second one that covers the oval racing portion. So first up on the schedule was the Skip Barber car at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, otherwise known as Mossport. It was a timed 30 minute race that ended up going 20 laps. There were 14 drivers that started the race and more than half of them either didn't finish or lost a lap due to attrition. The start of the race was clean as the field made their way around Mossport. This race included a ringer that I thought for sure would dominate and walk away from the field. He started from the pole with a lap time of 133.981, but domination wouldn't be the case. That ringer was Wyatt Gooden, and here's what he had to say post-race about what took place. Okay, I'm here with Wyatt Gooden. Wyatt, hey. great to see you again. Nice I didn't get a to, chance uh, to catch up with last you last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so busy last year, and there's just so much stuff here to check out. So, you raced in the first tournament race here at yep. the I Race for Life seminar. It was the uh, Skip Barber at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsports or Moss Sports, and you actually started on the pole. Yeah. And when I saw that, I thought, "Oh, Wyatt's got this locked. He's just going to run right. away." From well, the, I was. Well, I knew it was going to be tough because you have a really long straightaway at that track. The Skip Barber car has an abnormally huge draft, so I'm thinking, "Okay, it's going to be a good three-way battle. This will be fun." You know. Yeah. So what happened? Well, sure enough, I'm on track, and I realize I have one gallon less fuel than I need for a half-hour race. So I go back to the pits, come out of the pits, too late, everyone's already on the grid, I'm starting in the pits. So I so figure, okay, well, heck, you had a heck of a run then to, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. finish on the, on the podium, finish in third place. Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Coming up through the field like that is generally more fun than starting from the pole. So, I agree. You know, at the end of it all, it was actually more enjoyable to have to work through traffic and it managed podium, so it was cool. And you were racing on a set setup that you weren't all that familiar with. Well, you have a T300 at home, right? Yeah, I'd love and that. You don't run wheel. with those pedals. Right, yeah. The, what, what, I, so let's talk about your setup at home. So you run a T300, what kind of pedals do you run? I'm still using a perfect pedal, actually. Okay. So the, the G27 pedals with the Bodner cable, connected to the PC, and I've got it's a the... great set of pedals. Yeah, I love the Perfect Pedal. You've tried it. Yeah. Yeah, and I've had that thing for four or five years now, and it's... I mean, for me, it's... it's I still like that better than any load cell. Um, it, it's comparable to the expensive hydraulic sets to me. It's just, you know, it's it's not all machine quality metal pedals you're dealing with, but as far as strictly the feel of the brake pedal, that's it's, the, that's the most it's important on par. Part. Yeah, exactly. And as long as it lasts and it has that right feel, and I think too, and it, you, you'll probably agree with this, and, and, and it showed when you sat down and raced there, as long as you're comfortable with your gear, you know, and you get familiar with it, and you race with it, and the more you practice... You can adapt. Exactly, yeah. you're going to adapt to it and get used to it. So, yeah. But I, I agree though too that when you've got something that feels as realistic as a perfect pedal, it can just enhance the experience and, and, and probably make you a little bit better too. Yeah. So as you can see, if Wyatt would have started from the pole, he most likely would have dominated. I honestly thought while I was watching things unfold that he started from the pits just to give the other guys a chance, but that wasn't the case. He, as you saw or heard, messed up his fuel strategy. So, uh, but man, coming back from the back of the pack and going through the field and finishing third, that was quite an accomplishment. And you can see why I thought he was a rigger. I mean, honestly, why it's an alien. So, as a matter of fact, I'm going to have a, uh, a full interview that I'm going to post with him where I talk about his real racing career and some other stuff, and that should be up soon. So, you got to hear from Wyatt. Now, you're going to get to hear from the other two podium finishers to hear how things unfolded for them. Okay, I'm here with Tony Lamberti. Did I get that right? Yes, that's correct. Congratulations. Thank you. Second place Second in place. the uh, first tournament, Skip Barber at uh, Mossport. So, have you raced that configuration before? Not in the skipping, no. Okay, so you know the track then? Yes. You like the track? Yeah. It's tough. I uh, like any track that has elevation changes and a little character to it, yeah. I enjoyed the uh, final list there. It was real fun in the skipping. It was uh, hanging the rear end out and hanging on. So let's talk a little bit about the race. It was a half an hour. Yeah. Uh, and you had a nose-to-tail battle with Len Harrison pretty much the whole race. 
Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Were you, uh, did you have any, any strategy going on there, or were you guys just, were you just running? I was just pushing as hard as I could the whole race. Uh, had a lot of fun. Nice, clean race. We, I lost it in two early. He got past me. I got back past him after Moss. And from there, he just ran behind me most of the time and waited for my big mistake. So talk about the mistake. What happened there? Well, it's somewhat equipment, but it's just driver error. I had to, with the rig I brought, I'm racing with shoes for the second time only, so. Oh, really? Yeah. That can make a big difference. Yeah. I have a strip of fatigue mat down. My heel got caught on that, and if you're in the skippy, you can't dump the throttle. And I pulled my foot back off the throttle, and around it came. So oh, bummer. It was all right. Talk about your rig a little bit. It looks like a, uh, almost like a Rickmo Tech. It is. Okay. It is a uh, former iRacer, was getting out. He sold me all his equipment. So I just brought it up here so we have rigs for people to participate. Uh, I'm sharing it with anybody and everybody that comes by trying to promote iRacing as much as I can. Cool. And you run a G27? Yeah, that's a stock G27. Any, any uh, uh, modifications to the pedals or anything? No. Nope. Totally stock. Yes. Very cool. So, how long have you been eye racing? Uh, five, just over five years, I guess. Okay, so you've been doing it quite a while. Yeah. So, uh, so you ended up finishing second. Yeah. And what was your prize? Uh, got a twenty-five dollar gift certificate and two coupons. So, what do you think about racing in person like this? You know, with your fellow competitors basically oh. sitting right across yeah. from you and then yeah. being able to talk about it. It's, it's, it's cool always fun. There. Again, that's the again another really good part about this is meeting people with similar interests and hobbies, and it's really good getting together. Cool. Putting, putting faces with voices or names or whatever you see. And then being able to talk. I got some footage of you guys all talking after the yeah. race. It's pretty cool to be yeah. able to do oh, that. Oh, it's awesome. It is awesome. Well, cool. Well, congratulations, Tony. Thank you. Thank you very Maybe much. Maybe we'll see you back here for some of the, you're going to run some of the other tournaments? You're just a we'll road racer, right? I mainly road, yeah. So you're just going to stick with the road racing tournaments? Probably so. Cool. I don't want to cause any incidents going just left. I hear you. Well, good luck in the uh, in the future tournaments, and Thank we'll you. talk to you later. Thank you. Thanks. I'm here with Landon Harrison. Landon, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Winner of our first tournament race. So, Landon, this is not your first time on the podium here at I Race for Life. Uh, I'm getting kind of comfortable being up there. I mean, <laughs> now how many tournaments did you win last year? It was like half a dozen or so. Really? Yeah. Okay, so you're definitely uh, familiar with being up on the podium. Yeah. So uh, it was a half an hour race at, uh, again, at, at Canadian Tire. And uh, you were in quite the battle with Tony Lamberti. I was watching you guys, got some good footage of you guys racing. And uh, tell me a little bit about how that, how that race went down. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really exciting. And like, I've never driven Motorsport before, so, I mean, I've watched races and stuff there, so I knew the track layout, but... That's a tough you know, track. Yeah, you Especially know... Especially that tabletop section where you go on to the back straight. Yeah, it's... That part is really hard to push the car, because with the skip barber, it's... The skip barber takes, like, a certain discipline, and it, if you're driving fast, like, you're really on the edge in that car, so... Trying to go as quick as possible through there, you're just, you know, fighting it the whole way and trying to keep the back end from stepping out, and it's just... You know, it's a roller coaster track each lap. So that's quite an accomplishment. That, so that you've never turned a lap there. No. That's amazing. That, that is a tough car to drive. Yeah. So, um, so it looked like about uh, lap 19 or so, Tony seemed like he lost the handle a little bit. But you were putting a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. I know you guys were Dyson. You got, I know you got alongside him a couple times. Mm -hmm. Could you just not get, get a pass on him? Or were you just kind of taking your time? Well, like with most part, it's there's so many wide open sections. So there's a lot of draft, and me and Tony were so close that if I did get by him, like he would just draft back by me. So, like I was gonna save my stuff, uh, maybe until the last lap and see if I could draft on by him before the start finish line. But until then, I was gonna put pressure on him and see if he'd make a mistake. And well, we got like three or two laps to go there, and luckily he. Just uh, overcooked to going in that second to last corner and spun out. So after that, it was smooth sailing. Yeah, so you had a uh, pretty much a free pass after that. So let's talk a little bit about your setup. Last year you had, and you'd been running it for a long time, Microsoft Sidewinder wheel. And now you got a T500. Uh, tell me about the transition from the Sidewinder to the T500. Did it take you a while to get comfortable with it? Or did it pretty uh, much come naturally? Like, How'd that go? 
I like to think of the Sidewinder as like an old rust bucket car that you've had forever. You secretly love to drive, but and the T500 is like this luxury sedan. You know, that's, that's a good way to put these, it. Got all these all these fancy features, but uh, uh, it's not. I mean, I'm still racing. I racing with a steering wheel and pedal, so it's not too different. But there's a lot of feedback and stuff that the T500 has that the Sidewinder doesn't. So Makes it's sense. just getting used to the feel in the road, actually, which is. I mean, it's new to me and different, but it's also great because I think it, it makes me a better driver if I can actually feel the track. And it's a whole new world. It, it is, <laughs> it is. Uh, so now what about the static paddle shifters? Did that take some getting used to? Well, actually, I've, uh, whenever I've done GT Academy, that's the wheel they use. So okay. Even though I, I really dislike the static paddle shifters, but I've actually got accustomed to them. Just whenever I'm hard on the wheel and I need to shift, you know, I'll just let my other hand float and just, you know, give it a tap. and. It's, it's almost yeah, like if, yeah. you're, if you were driving with a manual shifter, you have to take your hand off the wheel to... Yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. pretty identical to that. It just, it just takes some getting used to, but now it's... I don't really notice it now. It's just second nature. So, what was the prize that you won for that race? Uh, in the Skid Barber race... Derek Spear designed the button box, right? Yeah, I got the button box, which cool. is pretty sweet. So. You're, you're stacking up some prizes here. <laughs> yeah, it's the pile's getting bigger, so... <laughs> Well, thanks for your time, Landon. I yep. may be seeing you back here again. Yeah, uh, maybe. So good luck in the other, the rest of the tournaments, and yep. uh, thanks for joining me here. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. All righty. So congratulations goes out again to Landon, Tony, and Wyatt for their podium finishes. And the prizes they won were Wyatt won a Bluetooth speaker, Tony Lamberti won $25 in iRacing credits, and Landon Harrison won a Derek Spear Designs button box for his victory. And here's the final standings from this event. Next up, we had the Star Mazda at Spa, and I mentioned the first race was timed. As a matter of fact, all the races were timed. Uh, this It was timed or uh, maximum amount of laps were set, but the first three races were 30 minutes, the, the last race, 45. Uh, but this one was 30, and it equated to 14 laps around Spa. We had a total of 15 drivers start the race, and there was actually some confusion leading into the race, so there probably would have been a few more guys, but 15 is what our starting grid was. Wyatt Gooden sat on the pole again, but was unable to make the start. So that put Kevin Vaughn and Amjad Yaman on the front row at the start. So of the 15 cars that started this race, four of them got into a little trouble on lap one. Uh, so those guys didn't make it past lap two due to a hectic start. Paul Slavonic, who started seventh, had to take some evasive action on those opening laps to become a contender in this race and it would pay off for him. After things settled down, Paul got into a battle with Billy Smith, who took over fourth position as they chased James Crahula in third. On lap five, James overcooked it, coming into the final chicane and spun, and then watched Billy and Paul take over third and fourth. Then on lap six, Paul made his move on Billy, coming up Kennel Straight into Les Combs and took over third. They battled back and forth for the spot until Billy just pulled off the track in the chicane, so I'm not sure what happened there. Or if he just had to leave, or I don't know what happened, but uh, Billy just quit. That left Paul all alone to finish in the third spot, uncontested for the rest of the race. And unfortunately, I couldn't catch up with Paul for an interview, but I did talk with the guys who finished on the top of the podium in first and second, and here's what they had to say. Okay, I'm here with Amjid Yaman. Did I get that right? Yes. Awesome, because uh, I'm horrible at pronouncing names a lot of times. <laughs> Um, and Amjad won, or was second place in the uh, Star Mazda at Spa in the uh, third tournament event. You had quite a battle with Kevin Vaughn. Oh yes, definitely. We go way back. I mean, we go back and forth all the time. The past couple years, that's normal for us. What we so now, this was, was this the first time you've met him in person? I oh, know we, we've met several times beforehand. It's, it's the first time with those simrigs, though. Okay. So, but it's the first time you've raced in, in person together? Yes. Okay, cool. So yeah. so what was that like, being able to go up to him after the race? And, and shake his hand. That's such a cool feeling, because all you can do online is just you know, type in GG or say good game or something like that. Right. Now you can just walk over, you know, high five, shake hands. It's such a great experience. It is, I agree. And um, so let's talk about your battle a little bit. You guys, now you, I think there was two guys that started in first and second, but they didn't make the race. Okay. So you guys basically inherited the front row. Yes. Right? So you started second. And I started Kevin, second, yes. And I, I, first. Yeah, I was able to get the jump on him on, on the stir. But, you know, with, with the Star Mazda at Spa, it's a draft battle. 
you can't get away from one another. And you make a mistake and you, you lose yeah, that yeah, draft. Yeah, you lose it and you lose the whole race. So. But you guys didn't do that. You guys seemed to, you guys stayed glued to each other yeah. for the entire uh, event. Yeah, we won't talk to each other, but but we, we knew just, you know, don't fight each other for the first half of it. Just, you know, let one guy pass, let the other guy pass, make up that gap, and then at the end, just go for it. Yeah, and, and that seemed to be what ended up happening, and that is exactly what happened. Um, now, did you know he was setting you up for that last oh, yeah, lap? Oh yeah, about a couple of laps ago, I saw him back off and I went on the mic and said, ah, I know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can hear him laugh in the background too. I, I, I could have backed off too, but I don't know why. I just like leading. <laughs> well, and you know what? If he would have made a mistake at that point too, then yeah, it, it, he would have basically handed you the race. Correct. So he, he was taking a risk by doing that. And then I got to say, those last couple corners going into that chicane, you guys were side by side. And uh, even, <laughs> you even set up on the inside going into the chicane, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so he was on the outside, and you guys stayed side by side. Let's, let's back that up to Blanchemont. Going through the outside of Blanchemont, I've never tried that before. It was, it was scary. And then Star Mazda, low down first, that rear end just snaps out away from you. Scary moment, but almost had it. And you guys almost touched. I mean, it was, yeah. it was close. Yeah, but like, yeah, just gotta have trust in the guy. And that's one of the few people I have trust in. And, and that, that, that definitely can matter in oh, a yeah. situation like that. So, uh, so tell me about your setup. You're running a G27, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, stock G27, stock pedals with the Bardanelle cable. And I got a couple models set up and then a fourth model on top that keeps up with info and times. That I, I can use it in the drone station to know what's going on. And then you got a, uh, you're, you're running a wheel stand, right? Yeah, the Omega GT wheel stand. Okay, how do you like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I saw you guys' review and I and I was looking for one. I, I can't use it in a boat because it's too low and I, it's too permanent of a solution. So that wheel stand actually made a big difference for me. Very cool. Well, all right, so um, that's going to wrap it up. I'm Jed. Thanks again. Thank you. Congratulations, and good luck in the uh, final couple of events. All right, thank you. Maybe I'll see you over here again. <laughs> okay, we're here with the winner of the third tournament race, Kevin Vaughn, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. So um, tell me a little bit about the race. So wh where'd you start on the grid? I started in third, actually, but the first and second place guys didn't even show up. Wyatt Gooden and Billy Smith didn't show up to the race in time. So. Okay, so you're lucky that Wyatt, actually I think Wyatt yes. ended up leaving. Yes, Wyatt left. I'm definitely lucky that Wyatt left. I mean, I, I think no, I'm- And no offense, Wyatt is pretty much an alien. I'm very familiar with Wyatt. I've raced with him a lot, but in fairness, I was only like a 10th slower than him in qualifying. Oh, really? But, oh, yeah. cool. So that's not bad. He was out of his element, I think. I was using my own <laughs> equipment. That, that always makes a difference. But the draft was strong enough, so I could have, I probably could have kept up with him a little bit. But. So was the qualifying lap a, a draft lap? No, I don't think so. You were by yourself? Yeah. Cool. So you started, well, you started on the pole then. I was on pole. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so you guys just started there and pretty much finished there. Yeah. But with a lot of seesaw, you guys were using the draft and your familiarity yes. showed because you guys were running side by side, especially on that last lap coming in those last couple corners, you guys were uh, side by side for that. Yeah, I mean, I guess the smart thing to do on a track like that is just to follow each other around the track for several laps. but. That's no fun. So I generally like to race, at least try to pass each other a few times. Makes it more entertaining. And so your strategy too, you were talking to your, your buddy next to you, was hold up, come yeah, to the I white in, flag. I was in second place with two to go. And so I was just like, well, I'll hold off for a lap and wait till the last lap. That's generally the best strategy at Spa and Road America and places like that. So he didn't make it even easy. though it didn't work. Actually, yeah, I kind of messed up and I did didn't. You think you did it too early? Well, I. I messed up on the last on the last lap on my in, my uh, first corner, going on which is the long you know corner up for the long straight. Right. And I didn't catch him before. I didn't catch him. I didn't catch him before at the end of the straight, which is where I was planning on passing him. Okay. So I caught him like a couple corners later. I I knew I was quicker than him in most of the corners, so I just kind of pushed a little harder and made it work. And then he didn't make it easy for you though at the end though. You guys were no, side I didn't. by side last couple corners. And you, you that he, thought you almost were gonna touch him. You he, didn't move that close. Yeah, he he took my uh, he took my line away. He got a run on me going going around uh, I can't remember what the name of that corner is, the one uh, right before the last you. chicane at Spa. Okay. And uh, he he got around the outside of me before that, and so he took the inside line of the chicane, which is what I wanted. Oh, so then you were on the outside going. Yeah, he forced me to the chicane. outside, so I just had to break really deep and really late and hope I can get around him. 
which it worked out. Let's say he held off. I think he, he, he normally that kind of that place right there ends in like a wreck or at least a little contact when people are racing really hard. But right. he let up a little bit, which helped. <laughs> well, it looked like you said you guys have raced before, so he knew who, who, he's, who he was racing against and, yeah. and vice versa. So, well, cool. Well, Kevin, congratulations again. Thank, Thank you, you for joining me here for this uh, post-race interview and good luck on the rest of the session. I think we've got about four more races. There's one going right now, which you're obviously not in. Yeah. Are you going to run the next HPD at... Uh... Yes. yes, it's a team event, so I have a... I was going to teammate with Wyatt, but that would be kind of that would be kind of cheating. So well, and he left. And, and he's he left. gone. So you he abandoned look, me. You better look so for I found, another teammate. I found another teammate. Cool. Well, so it'll be luck. it'll be what a lot harder. Are you guys running? Road America HBD. Cool. Yep. Well, good luck. Thanks again, Kevin. Thank you. Alrighty. Also want to give a shout out to my buddy Jack Allstad, who finished fourth in that race. And check out this battle coming into the final chicane for fifth between Larry Ford and John Ulmer. Quick look at the final standings. So again, congratulations to all three podium position finishers, Paul Slavonic, Amjid Yaman, and Kevin Vaughn for winning. And Paul won $10 in iRacing credits. Amjid won a Bluetooth speaker, and Kevin Vaughn won a Logitech G930 headset. So again, congratulations, guys, and thanks to those of you I caught up with. And Paul, I tried to catch up with you, but just things got hectic towards the end of the seminar, and I apologize for not uh, interviewing you two as well. You seem like a great guy, but congratulations, guys. So the third race uh, only saw eight cars come to the grid, and that's because it was a team event. Uh, and again, 30 minutes, HPD at Road America, and it ended up being 16 laps and Autobahn Motorsports sat on the pole with John Ulmer at the wheel, and he ran a 151-244. John's teammate for the race was Tony Duffy, which was actually pretty cool. That They were set up right next to each other, so they could communicate real time by talking, because they their chassis were set up right next to each other in the room, and that was pretty cool. The start was incident-free, and the cars quickly spread out as the drivers settled in. First team to perform a swap was Kujibo Racing with Alan Hesbeck at the wheel as they started lap four in second place. And that was the minimum amount of laps a single driver could run so that the team wouldn't get disqualified, or as it's called in iRacing, fair share. So they made it to where four laps or three laps was the fair share, uh, and that was the minimum amount of laps uh, that one driver could, could run. So he handed the car off to Amjin Yaman, to finish the bulk of the driving duties. This put Scott Burke with Keep It Simple Racing into second while John Ulmer pulled away from Autobahn Motorsports. James Krahula of Team Make Something Up also came in at the tail end of lap three to hand it off to Landon Harrison. On lap 11, John Ulmer, who had stretched his lead to almost 40 seconds due to early stops by some of the other front runners, handed the car off to Tony Duffy. At this point, Tony just needed to keep the car on the track and run some decent laps to bring home the win for Autobahn. They didn't change tires though, so Tony would take the car with hot rubber that had some wear. On his outlap, while exiting turn eight and heading towards the carousel, he lost the handle briefly and went off into the grass. Luckily, John had given him a lot of padding and Tony maintained the top spot and ended up finishing more than 40 seconds ahead of Amjid Yaman, who finished in second for Kujibo, and I actually got to talk to him post-race. Here it is. So let's move on to race number five. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, team race in the HPD at Road America. Okay. And uh, you teamed up with Alan Hesbeck. Yes. And what was the name of your it, team? It's Kujibo Racing. Kujibo? Kujibo. It's, it's a North American, a fat North American ape with no kin. <laughs> I'm sure there's Simpsons fans out there. They'll, they'll get it. Probably. Okay. So it's, it's a Simpson reference? Yes. Okay. So um, Alan started the car. Yes. Basically ran the minimum amount of laps. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he, it was like four he, laps. Yeah. He had no practice. I guess in qualifying, he was practicing just only two laps. I said, just start the car, uh, do, do your minimum amount, and I'll just jump in and see what I can do. 
So, and that's exactly what you guys did. I, I'm assuming you didn't change tires. Oh, no. No need to. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and I would assume you set up the fuel at the start of the race. To... Yeah, yeah. G give him some light fuel, see if you can get a gap on the vessel. I already knew first place was not out of the week because there was an HPD star in there. Oh, so, oh, so John Ulmer? John Ulmer, he's the HPD star. I mean, no, no he, way. He was I, on fire. Yeah, there's no way I could beat him. So you guys ended up finishing second. Congratulations yeah. on that. So talk about that race. Was it pretty much did, uh, once uh, things sp spread out? Was it did pretty much just yeah? Away? It was spread out, but since we pitted so early, I was able to catch up some, to some of the people that did not pit early. And at one moment, I actually had contact with someone. Really? Go, yeah, kind of passed them on the outside. They went, they went in too deep, went in, into the side of me, got some aero damage. So. It was enough to keep second, but like I said last night, I mean, instead of losing by 20 seconds, I lost by 30 seconds. Okay, so that definitely hurts you a little bit. Yeah. And it could have cost you third if, you know, with Landon Harrison coming yeah, in. Yeah, coming yeah, in, he's yeah. Been, he was on fire all day long. Exactly. He was, I think he was, he was on the podium for every, for all the races except for one. Right. And he didn't run that race. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you had your hands full there. All right, so um, that's going to wrap it up. Amjad, thanks again. Thank you. Congratulations, and good luck in the uh, final couple of events. All right, thank you. Maybe I'll see you over here again. <laughs> Unfortunately, due to the hectic schedule of the seminar and time constraints, I wasn't able to catch up with John or Tony or any of the other podium finishers. Uh, but here's what they took home for prizes. Team makes something up in third place with Landon Harrison and James Krahula, each won $10 in iRacing credits. Kuji Bo in second place with Amjin Yaman and Alan Hesbeck, each won a half year subscription to iAnalyze Racing. And the winners, Autobahn Motorsports, John Ulmer and Tony Duffy, each got $50 in iRacing credits. And here's the final standings for this race. So the fourth and final road race of the seminar took place late Friday night, and it was a long one. Uh, 45 minutes timed race uh, that went for 30 laps, and it was in the DW12 IndyCar at Watkins Glen, full version with the boot. And unfortunately, I didn't get to interview any of the guys from this race, again, due to time constraints, and it was so late, and honestly... My lights and stuff were torn down. I, I had borrowed some lights for some of the, the production crew there and they had torn them down. So I do have the replay though. I do have some footage from that race. So I am gonna do, still do a recap and I have the podium presentation. So, oh, and unfortunately my replay only had 20 cars available being shown. So I missed a little bit, but I'm gonna do my best to give you guys a, a recap here. So John Ulmer, who helped bring his team to victory lane in the previous road race in the HPD, sat on the pole and seemed to be the guy to beat. In second, Amjid Yaman, who had been on the podium for two of the three previous races, started second with Mike Erter behind him in third. 31 total drivers started this race, which was the biggest field out of all seven tournament races of the seminar, and all five of the public rigs that were set up were taken for this race, which was really cool to see. The start up front was clean, but we did have a few incidents back in the field, and I'm sure a few unhappy drivers. Things settled down for a little bit, but then on lap five, the leaders had this scary moment unfold right in front of them. John did a great job of keeping the car off the racing line, though, and everyone made it through clean. Then, as the lead pack was exiting the boot on that same lap, John Ulmer's chance for the win came to an abrupt end. Oh, no. With Amjad Yaman right on his rear, John lost the handle and nosed it into the inside guardrail. The lead was then handed over to Amjad, who never looked back. From there, it was honestly hard for me to follow the action in the replay because cars were popping in and out uh, as drivers went a lap down, so... Uh, again, I, I give you the best I can is under the circumstances. The other main battle on the track, though, was for second place, and it was between Mike Erter and Billy Smith. Mike did his best to hold off the hard-charging Smith, but it wasn't meant to be, and Billy ended up taking over the second spot with Mike finishing a solid third. In the end, Amjad won it by more than seven seconds over Billy Smith. 
Mike Erder finished third, just five seconds back of Billy, who finished in second. Here's the final standings from the race, with seven cars finishing on the lead lap and six others finishing a lap down to Amgen. For third place, Mike Erder won $10 in iRacing credits. Billy Smith brought home a Marcus Ambrose die-cast iRacing car, and Amjed won a DSD button box. So there you have it. Congratulations to all the guys that finished on the podium in the four road races for the 2015 iRace for Life seminar. The top prize winner was Amjed Yaman, who was on the podium for three of the four road races with a win in the IndyCar, second in the HPD team race, and second in the Star Mazda event. The only other driver to be on the podium multiple times was Landon Harrison, who won the opener in the Skippy and finished third in the HPD team race. And I'd like to thank Alan Hesbeck for hosting all of the sessions and organizing all the tournaments. He did a great job of keeping a good pace and making sure that the, the races were launched and making sure guys were set up to join those races. So thanks, Alan, great job on that. And again, to Cyan Alford for putting on the iRace for Life seminar. It was just an awesome event. So that's gonna wrap up my road race reports from the 2015 iRace for Life seminar. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you didn't come, try to make it next year. Uh, make sure you watch my full recap of the iRace for Life seminar and find out how you can join us next year, February 25th and 26th, I believe. But make sure you check it out. Hopefully you've enjoyed this post-race report. I'm Darren Ganji for Inside Sim Racing. See you guys next time.